What's going on everybody? Welcome back to M for Movies. Well, I am back with another special uh, reaction here. Uh, this is a reaction to uh, the one about X-Men Apocalypse that the, uh, the podcast review uh, from uh, Talking Marvel Plus. And uh, I just did uh, Dark Phoenix. Uh, that's going pretty well. So we're, we're actually going to go uh, backwards, I guess, uh, and we're going to do uh, X-Men uh, Apocalypse, which of course came out in 2016, and I got the uh, I got the 4K uh, right there, so 4K here for X-Men Apocalypse, and that would be the third one of the prequel uh, four movies, you could say, uh, and so that's what we're going to do, so... All right. Welcome to Talking Marvel Plus. I'm Dennis. And I'm Dyer. And if you like movies where Oscar Isaac Dennis is and Dyer this time. Potential, then this is the movie for you. Episode of this. But does Damn. also. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a dude that's going to be the dude. Movie. Yeah. And he do you think. Another do you think. Egyptian I'm sorry. inspired. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Do you think that they say. <laughs> The cast and holy oh, shit, he's already familiar with Egyptian. Get him, get him for Moon Knight. Yeah, I think they're like, we can get a deal with his agent. Because Probably, of, yeah. I yeah. Know, that's why they got him. Because he's a recognizable name, but he's not like a right. super, I mean, super duper star. I mean, I think, well, I think after the newest trilogy of Star Wars, everybody knows him as Poe Dameron. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, pretty much. I'm trying to think what other people might know him for. Ex Machina? I know him for being Apocalypse because I had no idea it was him until I obviously looked at IMDb before I watched it, but I never knew it was him. Yeah, you don't do a great job. And his voice is so modulated, you don't know he's got so many prosthetics and makeup work done. You, you don't. Which at the time, he was not really a, a thing yet. Well, that's not true. This this came uh, out in 2016, and he's been in a bunch of stuff. When, uh, when was The Force Awakens? Was that 2016 as well? No, uh, I don't think so. Um, I thought The Force Awakens... Was that 2015? Or am I way off base? Uh, the Force Awakens was 2015. Okay. Yeah. So. But, but Oscar Isaac's been in a ton of stuff, uh, especially... Like, he was in Ex Machina, right, in 2014. Yes, amazing movie. Still Dang. horrifying. I have never seen it. Ooh, you... Ooh. I didn't right. say it here. No, not yet. That's no. not true. You've seen the first episode. I mean, how does... He was apparently credited as a voice for interesting person number one in Into the Spider-Verse. But we know, we know he plays Spider-Man from 2099 or whatever. Yeah. But obviously his role, I mean, he was in a ton of stuff, but like, this is surprising. Oh, okay, so Force Awakens was 2015 and this was 2016, so it was right, back to back. But I guess Machina was 2014. Yes, it was. And then, well, he was in The Born Legacy? Huh. Let's go back and watch that now. Anyway, okay, that's enough. That's enough of Oscar. You played one of the villains. So keep your pants on. Oscar Isaac is a good actor. He yeah, he is. And he, he's going to nail his Moon Knight. Poe Dameron is a good character. Speaking of that, do you realize we only have one more X-Men movie to um, review before the countdown starts for Moon Knight? <laughs> and by countdown, you mean... A whole month. Wait a second. Did we miscalculate? I thought we, I, I thought this bumped up against Moon Knight. No, I don't think so. I think Moon Knight. I thought Moon Knight came out in March, middle of March maybe. Hang on, let me look. In March. We're recording this on the night of Thursday, February twenty. Yeah, so it's a month. March thirtieth is the first episode of Moon Knight. Ew, so we did miscalculate. Yes, we did. 
Sorry, dear listeners. Are we watching six? Do we watch six X Men movies? We need to watch eight. We thought we were sliding in. So wait, did Moon Knight and Moon One come out like the same time? No. Moon Knight's March thirtieth. No. Obi Wan's not until May twenty fourth. Oh, you're right. Okay. Well, this has been. We don't know how to schedule. <laughs> this has been talking. We don't know how to schedule. Thanks for tuning in. See you next we, week. We don't. Or we got tomorrow. Week. We've got next week covered. Um, yeah. Yeah, we do. But hey, now's a good time to say, hey, go on over to patreoncom slash Plus and tell us what you. Well, you gotta pay us a dollar at the minimum. And then join us in the Discord to tell us what you want us to talk about in the month leading up to Moon Knight. They pay us, uh, I don't know, Tree Fitty? Tree Fitty? Yeah, Tree, tree Fitty gets you. Uh, I guess I need to get on that for I'm Patreon. On this monster tier. <laughs> I suppose. Okay. okay, well, anyway. Anywho. We did watch X Men Apocalypse. Yes, we did. And it was enjoyable. I saw a review from somebody that said... I, I will say, I... Go ahead. So I saw a review Overall from thoughts. some... I saw... I will say that me and my brother, we we watched uh, X-Men Apocalypse uh, twice in like the same night when it came out. Uh, I think we watched uh, we watched a normal screening and then we watched a, a, a 3D screening. Or it might have been the other way around. But, uh, but yeah, we... Um, we spent uh, we spent five hours in a in a in a movie theater. So, yep. A review from somebody, and, and I'll say this, and then I'll say my overall thoughts. I said it wasn't bad; it just didn't flow well. And I would say I have to agree with it. Um, it wasn't terrible, but there was some, the pacing was off a little bit. Possibly. I will say, <clears throat> I'm having, I, I watched this on Saturday. I am having, I have had to gone back and, I've had to gone back and read the plot summary to refresh myself. Mm-hmm. Because, albeit a fun movie, not necessarily memorable, but out of mm. all the, I, what do you call this quadrology of films the I think it's prequel saga at this point. what do you call this saga of films what, what do we call the it? x-men the prequel saga. saga sounds about right the first class saga yeah yeah the first class saga of films but that doesn't really yeah because this this Dark one Phoenix out of all these this it. feels the most first classy i mean no Sony. this one this one feels the most animated series Oh, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's the most, like, just... Yeah, because it's got a lot of characters in there. It's not trying to do more than the others. Right. The others, so... Because, uh, honestly, First Class is good, but the Cuban yeah. Missile Crisis stuff is almost a little heavy-handed. Right. And um, doesn't quite earn that. Um, I, I... Also, uh, did you guys... Uh, have you guys been noticing that that this that these four movies are all like decade based? Uh, like like first class is sixties, seventies uh, is obviously well obviously Days of Future Past is set in the future, but then it's also set back in the seventies. Uh, this one was more of like an eighties movie, and then of course nineties uh, for uh, Dark Phoenix, and that would eventually get to. You know, you know, early early two thousands uh, for uh, uh, for to start up the uh, original trilogy. Um, so yeah, I ex- I enjoyed this. I would say this is it was good. Honestly, I liked it. I would. This is if I a year from now, if I'm gonna rewatch. My opinion, uh, I give uh, X Men Apocalypse a four yeah. out of five. So know, it's it's about eight out of ten. This. It's the best movie really. that's subject out of the three we've watched thus far. I had the most fun with this one. I really liked Days of Future Past. That was really good. Yeah. Yeah, re-watching Days of Future Past. But I caught, I caught a lot more 
than the first time I watched it, I'd probably go back. And, so first off, this was more this of the a, most MCU. Yeah, this is more of a very much more of a continuation of first class esque, right? Because you get everybody's still kind of developing their powers. What's her face, CIA lady? But you've got more of the McTaggart, yeah. Yeah, Moira. You get more, more Moira. This could have fit in. Bef- so it could have went first class, apocalypse, days of future past. Mm. That could have been, mm. you know. Um, but yes, but no. But anyway, so here's let's start off with some trivia tonight. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a trivia question. Okay. I'm gonna see if you can get it. Okay. Right. First question. Okay. Who was the mother of Nightcrawler in the comics that they did not refer to in the movie? Oh, it's um. Yeah, this was this was Mystique. You you brought this up. Uh, I guess you you brought this up for Dark Phoenix, but then again, Daniel's not here. So and then uh, Azizel is the father and blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Yes, who is the dad? This is in the comic, but not in the movie. The dad. Mm-hmm. Who is oh. the... Yep, think about it. We saw this mutant in, in first class. Oh, what's his face? The guy that... Um, the devil guy. What's his Azazel. name? Azazel. Yeah, he's obnoxious. Yeah, so they... And actually, there's an... Yeah, yeah. That makes so sense. they, they joke like in a outtake, uh, Jennifer Lawrence said, like joked, jokingly said, but you know something about her being uh, his mom and everything. But it's you know it's not it's not canon or anything. So, true or false? Here's another trivia question that may or may not have just made up. True or false? Hugh Jackman insisted on being naked for his scene in Alkali Lake, but they made him wear pants. Yes. True. True. That's false. <laughs> oh, I can be more... I'm more mm. natural if I get my better ass. That's how we do it in Australia. If I wake up in a lake, I'm gonna be fair assed Because <laughs> in Australia, when we're in lakes, we're fair ass. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's <laughs> the only... have a line I like that about being naked in a bed. Yeah, he was talking about uh, <laughs> Days of Future Past. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's the trivia. I'm sure if more comes up later. We'll uh, actually, we'll touch on the end of it um, about a certain post credit scene that was supposed to introduce something, but we'll get there when we get there. So. And I don't know if you guys brought this up uh, with uh, Days of Future Past, but when he wakes up in the 70s, um, and he's in bed with that with that chick, and that chick is like um, calls him Jimmy. Uh, called him Jimmy because uh, his his real name uh, isn't Logan. It's it's James. It's James Howlett, and so Jimmy is is another name for James. So uh, yeah, that's where that comes from. I like the. And because he wasn't, uh, he did not go through the Weapon X project yet, so he wasn't, he wasn't Logan. I thought the opening was pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it was so, good. Yeah, it opens with it's Egypt. The Egyptian. Egypt. We get the we get a taste of this at the end of Days of Future Past with the post credits. Right, the post credits. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Young, young, young Apocalypse is is. Uh, or he's not Apocalypse, that's not his character, it's Abu something or another, but he's constructing a pyramid with the four horsemen of the Apocalypse uh, looking on from across like a sand dune or something like that. So yeah, like you were saying, uh, we get these hooded figures, right, these these shrouded figures walking into uh, a pyramid that's got a um, shroud or like uh, flags over the top of the pyramid my first question is how do you know 
that guy that was standing on top with like the the because there are some conspirators that want to like lock these people away because they're a false god. Um, Correct. You know they're not that close; so they can just look up and see each other. You know that's probably like about not that's probably like yeah hundreds of feet away. And there's like you got the sun in your eyes. You're like so you like this scene. I was kind of cool because basically they're like taking other mutants that have powers and he's absorbing their powers. No, I didn't like that part. I like the whole like co-conspirators and like booby traps. Like oh, where they pull off yes. the where they pull off the tarp and then they like use the hammers and break out the wood. Imagine if you miss swung though and you didn't break that wood to begin with, or you didn't break it all the way. So like the big block that falls to cr- it seems like a design flaw. If it's if three giant you know, stones, yeah, stone, can yeah. collapse an entire building. Well, maybe you shouldn't have three pillars in the middle that uh, hold everything up. I'm okay. just saying, this, this, uh, I know his name's not Apocalypse, technically. So, here's a question. A- Apocalypse ha- had some hubris that he needed to check, because also, here's if you're going to have right? a pyramid, maybe oversee some of the designing. Yeah, so here's a question for you. Uh, well, at that point, he right, he was feeble, and uh, he was old. Um, <laughs> so the lady that kind of, like, puts that shield around him when, when the um, when the, uh, the pyramid is collapsing. Yeah, like the, the cocoon. Yeah. And she, she passes, she dies, because she, like, she hits her back and cracks her back in half. Yeah, but then she, like, yeah. finishes the spell. And then she yeah. Like, that was some brutal stuff, like, when the stone <laughs> smacked them in the face, like, they just... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no blood, but it was gruesome. How about the two guys that There's ran lots in? Of body horror. How about yeah, the two guys that ran in? The one guy, like the one mutant, turned him into skin bags, like uh, just like turned him to muscle and skeleton, like instantaneously, like ooh. Yeah. So the guy, the guy turned into a cube. Um, yeah, he like crunches his bones up into him. Yeah, but my question is, does that? There's no, there's no way that cocoon lasts for all that long. Because eventually we see Apocalypse in modern day, and he's fine. There's no rock on top of him. I mean, there's rock on top of him. But, like, you would think that would have, spell would have worn off or whatever, and the rocks just would have fallen and crushed him. That's my first, that's my first plot hole that I find in this. Yeah, although, that whole scene, you guys has been a lot of disbelief. Yeah. That's true. That's true. So... Yeah, I mean that that was good, and then and then after that we see. Well, we we go back to uh, well we go, we get Scott Summers we get Scott Summers in yep. middle school or high school. Am I an idiot? I don't remember the guy that had the ability to shoot. Havoc. Yeah, I don't remember Havoc being Scott. Also, did you guys know? That hold on, I'm checking IMDb here. Okay, so um, Scott's teacher uh, in this scene, uh, in the in in the classroom, uh, is uh, is actress uh, Ali Sheedy, who actually played uh, Allison in the uh, Breakfast Club. So, did you guys know that she was also in? Uh, she played Stephanie in Sword Circuit. So, I bet you did it. But you do now. Did they, did they call him by his last name in that movie? I think they just call him Havoc. 
Yeah, I don't think they say, they like, kind of, is that like a retcon where they're like, oh, we're gonna say it's, I don't remember Cyclops having a brother. Yeah, yeah he, he does. He expected his brother to die. He did. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. I expected him to die. I'm surprised. <laughs> I expected him to die, but they really, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me. In the comics, it's the other way around. And Scott's, uh, Scott's Matt, the older I mean, brother. His real name is, his real name is Alexander Summers. So. Well, no, but it's, my point is, in, um, what's the second of the new trilogy of Star Wars films? What do you mean the second of the new? Oh, um, The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi. Jedi. Last Jedi. So The Last Jedi, it kind of reminds me, we're like, okay, I'm waiting for Princess Leia to die off. And she just, like, floats herself back into the ship. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, that's why I felt like with Scott Summers' brother, with Havoc, I'm like, he's gonna die, right? <laughs> and so, he never dies. <laughs> he, just, he just keeps on living for, like, 90% of the film. So, according to the information on Havoc, He's born in the 1940s, and he died in the 1983, which is where this movie kind of takes place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is but that's the, the that's the revised timeline. So that would have made him 43 years old. That guy did not look 43 years old in the. No. Uh, I wish we had. I wish well, we had more Jubilee. Here's the thing: uh, X Universe, Jubilee they age in the comics that I know of, slower. In the animated series, she's 100 percent Asian. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. I, I guess it's been forever yeah. since I've seen the animated series. Yeah, but they got her, like, um, trademark yellow trench coat. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, yeah, so, yeah, after the Egyptian scene, we Did get... Moira. Yeah, we get, we, we get Moira. Scott. Well... Scott's in high school. He has issues. His powers are starting to manifest... This girl, like the popular jock, thinks he's hitting on his girlfriend. Yeah, he's all winky. And like, the teacher like sends Scott to the principal's office. After he's, she's like, "Hey, worst teacher ever." Yeah. Hey, you're making a racket in class. Yeah, that's uh, teacher. The principal's office after the that's teacher from the Breakfast, breakfast Club. Like, yeah. How like, about the no. douchebag that like screamed at him for? Are you winking at my girl? <laughs> well, he, uh, I'm surprised he didn't get his face melted off when. No. The, okay, that's the other thing. So right, your Cyclops. So like Cyclops is he can split a tree in half with just a flimsy bathroom stall door. It just right. pushes it back off the hinges. Yeah, no, and he melts the door where all the mutants are being held at the the Alkali Lake base. So little inconsistency with his you powers. Could, there. Okay, so if I'm putting on my nerd hat here, I could say, nah. well, actually, um, he he was just developing his powers of puberty so they weren't full force yet so oh, okay. it wasn't able to fully go through the metal door oh, oh, oh. but yeah he melts a door <laughs> later so yeah I'm just saying that that would be like the nerd amp that would be the only way to explain that away it'd be sick so this obviously uh, so days of days of future past retcons everything from like X-Men Origins Wolverine and everything because remember the scene in X-Men Origins uh, when Professor X shows up and like it's a young Cyclops and young uh, Jean, I mean, and everything. Like, mm. What the hell? He's walking. Jean Patrick Stewart, deep fake. Yes. Um, yeah. So like Cyclops is there the first time. It's like that's bullshit. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, it retcons everything. Um, yeah. So Havoc takes him to Professor X's school for the gifted. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And pretty much, um, they go through X-Men training. Yeah, this is where we first see a young um, Jean Grey. We, we meet Jean Grey for the first time. But before that, right, I totally forgot. Before that, we get the classic Marvel trope. And what is that trope, Dennis? Cheech fight. Cheech fight. We have, mm-hmm. I was going to quiz you, but let's do it now. What is the other classic, more specifically, X-Men trope we get? Shirtless person. What? Shirtless person. <laughs> no, that's way too big. The Damn. opening um, 
Mm. Opening title sequence. Holocaust references. Oh yeah, that's right. The Holocaust references. We literally go back. We go back to Auschwitz. We go back to the fence that gets bent. Right. The very first X-Men movie. Yeah, and like, Magneto's living in Poland and uh, has a family. Yeah. There's another uh, question. Do you guys like Do you guys like the opening uh, credit sequences uh, in the X Men movies um, that 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 end up went on uh, uh, the door for Cerebro? Uh, um, I like them. They're always really cool, and how they like go through like well, well like this one specifically went through uh, through you know time and stuff like that, and so. Um, like all the decades passing and all that, so I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah. and, his, and his daughter can control birds. Yeah, and yeah. the guys. Yeah, or like nature. Film jumps around a lot. It does, and but, so the guys but, that have the bows and arrows don't. The, aren't the arrowheads made out of metal? No, I think they were hmm. more traditional, like a Native American stone, like obsidian. Stone. Just, you know, rock, stone, whatever you got. You can flatten up into a point. Okay. <laughs> but, but basically, his daughter can control birds. The birds piss <clears throat> off the one guy, and he shoots an arrow that goes through both of the mom and the daughter? Well, yeah, he wasn't, well, <laughs> actually, he wasn't standing very far away, and you gotta think the little girl is pretty small, so... But that was a hell of a shot. If the if the if the arrow travels at thirty five seconds per feet, and uh, but yeah, it was, and he didn't like. And shoot it's all because, because he, and it's all because Magneto decided to Eric decided to save a guy when a big pot of molten metal was falling, so he used his powers instinctively to save the guy. And right. then someone went and told the Polish guy, the Polish military, the police, or whoever. The police, yeah, yeah. So the. The guy that shoots his wife and daughter with the arrow doesn't do it on purpose. The bird startles him, and he lets it go. Mm. Um, but still, yeah, so Magneto has learned from the days, or the the end of Days of Future Past, right? And he's kind of gone in his own kind of little seclusion here to for his own penance, and uh, assumes this... Henrik uh, name, where and he's working in a metal place of you know like a like a uh, foundry of all places. Yeah. Uh, where I guess that's like an alcoholic working in a bar. Uh, you know, he's surrounding himself with. He knows that he has you know ultimate control over it, but doesn't want to act on it. Um, speaking of, how about when apocalypse just like melts people into the ground there yeah like he literally just melts people into the ground you see legs twitching you know hands twitching that's yeah. uh i think terrible. that's matter yeah. manipulation yeah, his powers are um he can guy he can cause a guy to go from like wings uh feather wings to like metal wings <laughs> his powers are kind of well his powers remind me of it's like when you're playing like a ps1 game and it's like held together with just like duct tape and string and like the, you can see through the polygons. He like, like, like you're like half through a wall and half in the ground. Like the game right. just the, the the boundaries didn't just quite didn't load correctly. So but this the scene where he makes um angel right when when the wings are popping out of his back like the yeah. metal ones. Oh, that was excruciating. Just yeah, like, I okay. I will was... say it. I I hate angel. Doesn't he die? It, uh, Where's that? No, because that that's uh, what's his face? Uh, ben, um, ben Foster. He was Angel in the interim. Ben Foster. So, uh, doesn't he yeah, go down with the plane? Yeah, I, say, uh, I, I thought Angel went so down I, with I the just, uh, yeah, with the plane just, crash. I don't like Angel. At I the end. Like Angel. In fact, he's, if I or were to be, like okay, let's, let's play a game. Okay. If you were to be a mutant, okay, what's the one mutation <coughs> that you've seen in any of the films that you would least like to be? 
least likely to be? Or least, least, least like, like to have? Least like to have. Oh, it's got to be the uh, Cyclops having to wear special glasses at all times and can't, like, you accidentally look at somebody. Uh, Rogues is pretty bad. Cyclops. Cyclops, final answer. Okay. Uh, if I woke up with wings, fucking kill me. It's oh, so yeah. disgusting. It's disgusting. And then, then, then you turn into you've got metal wings. How do you sleep? Good point. <laughs> do you yeah, yeah, land yeah. on your face? Well, also, if you think about it, would if 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 Warren Worthington the third, uh, if he gets his wings removed altogether. Um, I mean, he's still, he, he's still a mutant, but he can't fly if he gets his wings removed. Um, so, and if they do get removed, uh, how long, how long does it take to, I mean, would it, would they grow back over time? Uh, so, I mean, obviously they do because in, uh, X Men Three, uh, they uh, he he tries to cut it off. So eventually, uh, the wings do grow back over time. But uh, but but let's say somebody, some you know, let's say, I don't know Thanos, which can't do that in the, the X Men movies. But uh, what if what if he did it in the comics? Somebody somebody big like Hulk or some shit uh, tore off the wings. All right. Would would they just you know grow back? Um, would he still you know he can't fly you know so yeah. He, he hangs upside down like a bat. Yeah, it just seems like a giant inconvenience. It's disgusting. And flying, are you saying that, if are I, you saying I, it's I, disgusting because it's coming out of your back or because birds are notoriously like dirty? bird feathers? I don't oh, have yeah. feathers. But if they're metal though, that's kind of cool. Then you just shred every like. How do you put a shirt on? Well, you don't. You just wear like vests. <laughs> think of all the. Remember the dickies, right? The dickies back in the day that you like the mock turtleneck that you yes. wear underneath the shirt. That's what you would do. You would just get a dicky t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, or you'd have to like custom. You'd have to like rip your shirts or have like buttons so you'd like have to like button your shirts down the side. Giant yeah. pain in the ass. A huge inconvenience. See, I've thought okay. this through. Okay, um, second follow-up question. What's the power you most want to have when you, if you woke up randomly with powers? Oh, um, definitely the power to, like, instant healing. Yeah, yeah, Wolverine instant healing. Yeah, because you just don't give a shit. Uh, like, hey, yeah, also, uh, teleportation, telekinesis, a telekinetic. Yeah, you basically are, uh, I wouldn't want to be telepathic. But telekinetic would be cool. I doubt I don't it. think so. I don't think so. Well, in Logan he does, right? He's sick because of like the genetically modified. Uh, well, I mean, Angel thing. does wear uh, did you, did you, like uh, full uh, flight uh, suits, you could say. So full like full, like, full body suits. Logan. Thank so you. that's what he mostly wears. Calibran. Oh yes. Not played by the same actor, but still. Yeah. I guess that is Nick. Yeah. Okay. Why did I say Nightcrawler? I make yeah, I don't know. not the same. I don't know where I got that. Caliban. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely different in this. Very different. I forgot he was in it until I saw that scene. I was like, hey, I know him. Yeah, and you've got <laughs> Olivia Munn in this. I forgot Olivia. Oh yeah. You know she was engaged to Aaron Rodgers at one point. She was. Olivia Munn played a. Want to know my theory about that? A really great. Um, <laughs> we don't Psylocke. Know I know your theory of that, but it's probably... It's, <laughs> it's probably not, true. It's not appropriate. All right. For those okay. of you who don't want to be triggered, skip ahead 30 seconds. Dyer, give everybody your theory on Aaron Rodgers. Speaking of uh, Angel and uh, Psylocke in the comics, they were actually a couple. So, yeah. Aaron Rodgers is a closeted homosexual that dates uh, and gets engaged to Danica Patrick, Olivia Munn, Shannon Woodley, uh, and can never go through with the marriage because he is not true with himself yet. 
Okay. Um, I still got about 15 seconds. Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Uh, it's just maybe, a theory. It's well, just maybe a theory. it's just a challenge for him to be in a relationship when he tries to be, you know, one of the best, you know, football players ever. No, no, no. If you've got one of those crazy, wacko theories, just lean into it. Don't, don't, don't kind of curb it back. Fine. Don't he's, back. A, he's a gay lizard alien. 30 seconds. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, we really haven't discussed much of the plot of this film. There's not much to discuss. Yeah, so you've got Scott Scummers. Scott Scummers. <laughs> Scott Scummers. Scott Scummers. Scott Scummers. You've got... That's not... not so, uh, there was a l- porno series back in the day uh, <laughs> when I worked at a video chain store. And we had adult movies, and one was called, like, Not Harry Potter. Uh, it's like... It was like not, and it was like a triple X variety, so it was like not Harry Potter triple X. Uh, so like they would make all these porn parodies. So that would be the the not wolf, the not X Men would be Scott Cummers would be. <laughs> yeah. uh, my powers, I shoot too much cum. Pow 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 pew pew pew. pew. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enough enough. So you've got the Scott Cummers. <laughs> you got Scott, Scott Summers. Summers. You've got the Scott Summers storyline. You've right. got the. Well, that's where he first, meets Jean, he first meets Jean Grey, too, and then you can see the, the romance start coming, start unfolding. Which is really weird that Wolverine you, likes uh, her because, like, by the time they meet, he's like 182. And she's like thirty. Yeah. So did you did you notice the branding on his goggles that Beast makes for him? Yeah, it's the Ray Bans. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty. I mean, it fits with the time. Not I sure how. Not sure how he got a brand deal on something that he just invented in a lab. <laughs> he said it was an old pair of glasses he had that he modified. Uh, with leftover ruby crystals or leftover rubies and stuff like that. So seems maybe like if bullshit. you listened. Yeah, it seems like Speaking bullshit. of bullshit, we have our bullshit quote of the week. My bullshit quote of the week. Trivia. Yes. Of the week. Um, so this is a recent segment, but for those of you who don't know, the bullshit Every trivia week, of the week as we go to the IMDb yep. bullshit trivia of the week, we go through IMDb's trivia section, which is usually... Interesting, but there's usually some stuff that's very suspect. Very suspect. Done Wikipedia style, where anybody can write anything. But uh, here, here's the bullshit trivia. Although not in the movie, Sir Patrick Stewart jokingly informed Brian Singer, the director, that he would be willing to play Mystique should Jennifer Lawrence, quote, start playing up, he said. I am also so ready to be naked, painted blue, and the world is ready for it too. There is no way Patrick Stewart on a movie he wasn't re- even like associated with to say, "I want to be Mystique," as a joke, right? To yeah. a pedophile. A pedo. Yep. Because nope. Brian Singer, the director, mm-hmm. started getting sued <clears throat> left and right, like the year after this movie. Oh, for sure. He sure did. He, he got sued for. Basically, uh, child molestation, child Very molestation, much. and raping like every other day for about three years. Yeah, in fact, and they're all still pending, which means <laughs> they're not settling like Kevin Spacey not did. Settling because that's all I'm going to say. The dude's a creep. Very the much. Dude so. is a creep. There's no sorry way. that we confused him with Brett Ratner. So Brian Singer was he? Did he direct the fourth film? Uh, I don't think so. Apocalypse. I mean, um. Dark Phoenix? Yeah. No. no. And does no. Patrick Stewart appear in that movie? I don't think so. No. Because that even supports my claim of this is bullshit. <laughs> but then, so I started watching Dark I Phoenix. I know Patrick but Stewart can be funny, but that's not. That doesn't strike me as Patrick Stewart's humor. I am I watched him painted blue and naked. <laughs> I haven't finished it yet, so yeah, I'm going to go back and rewatch it for next week. Simon Kinberg. Uh, directed it. And, okay. But he and, did. And how much? He, hang on. Okay. Simon Kinberg was a producer on uh, The New Mutants, which is actually pretty good. 
The Martian, Logan, Fantastic Four. Oh, Fantastic. Ooh. Uh, uh, Days, Days of Future Past. Um, so that's pretty cool. And the New Mutants, the new Twilight Zone that was on CBS for a little bit. Legion, which is a... Uh, a um, mm-hmm. I'm getting more scrutiny on this trivia. Legion was a... Uh, Professor X's son, but they did a whole like FX series on it, which is pretty cool. I've got yes. I've got more scrutiny. Okay. Did Patrick Stewart and Jennifer Lawrence's Mystique even appear in the scene together in Days of Future Past? No, I don't think so. Yeah, so they're <laughs> bullshit. He's never even met Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> you see what I mean though, like Yeah, yeah I don't think they do. He, he would have gone out of his way several directions to make this comment. Right. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay, so, going back to the film. My bullshit. Moira doesn't have her memories. Yep. Yes. They get Moira after she discovers Shura Shem. (laughs) I believe it's Apocalypse. Yeah. But um, they break into the CIA, not break into the CIA, but they basically use Charles's abilities to go through security. Mm-hmm. They go to her office, like, hey, we've got some stuff. What, what prompts them to go there? Remind me. Uh, so they see uh, Moira on, uh, no, so Professor X hooks into Cerebro to check out the earthquake or the tremor in Egypt and sees her. So he's like, oh, I'm going to go be a creep. Even though I erased all of her memories on the beach uh, from first class, I'm going to go creep on her and in her office at the CIA. That's correct. Okay. That's pretty. That's a, so you guys got literally... Kind of <laughs> <laughs> you guys literally got 10 minutes left of this episode to basically cover an hour and a half of the rest of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 it kind so, of jumps around a lot. That's what does. I mean. Like it was a fun film, but it wasn't. There's... Apocalypse goes and gets his four horsemen. Right, he gets Storm, who is from Wakanda in the comics. So they're thinking that's how they're going to introduce. You know, yeah, they get Storm, who is just basically hanging out in Egypt, being a thief. Yeah, right. And has, like, but she was. White. Yeah, and she's got a... Got a mohawk? And, face, and she, like, idolizes Mystique. Everybody does. She's, got a, mo- Mystique she's got a mohawk. It's more like me. The Paris, trees, the Paris Accords. Yeah, it's like all the mutants think she's great. But the, then he gets he gets Angel. He gets Psylocke, right? Which is Olivia Munn's character. And then he gets Magneto. That's his four horsemen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... And basically, so, yeah, they just want to... Havoc shows up. Uh, well, not had. They all show up at the mansion, and Havoc like destroys Cerebro, Cerebro because um, Apocalypse is trying to gain Professor X's mind. And long story short, Havoc blows up the hyperdrive quantum engine in the Blackbird that destroys the mansion. But who arrives? Uh, Quicksilver. Yep. Quicksilver knows that Magneto's the dead. Excellent uh, Quicksilver scene. Very yeah. Good. Uh, Sweet Dreams is by the Eurythmics is playing. Um, and so he rescues everybody except for Havoc because Havoc completely... You guys remember when the dog had the uh, had the slice of pizza in his mouth? shows up, right, and takes all these people to Alkalaya Lake. While Apocalypse takes uh, Professor X to Egypt where he's... Well, he doesn't to... take everyone. He just takes... Well, I mean, he takes... Uh, he takes uh, Mystique. He takes uh, Quicksilver. He takes Nightcrawler. And, and then Gene, Scott, and um, Nightcrawler. Night, well, Nightcrawler. Yeah, he takes Mystique Poof themselves onto the helicopter. And it turns out they have like a mutant Faraday cage. Um, <laughs> that's yeah. like, did you think that when he turns out? Oh, it's a Faraday cage. Yes, for mutants. Get out. Yeah, I mean, and they can't use their powers or anything. Little box of isolation. Um, but yeah, so the B storyline at this point uh, is. Maybe well, that's the problem with the film, is it jumps around so much, there's like A, sub A, sub B, D. Yeah, so... Like well, I mean, you had... Professor X 
You did. You did have a younger. Uh, I think it was uh, Striker. Is that correct? Yeah, a younger William Stryker, uh, who was basically taking all the mutants. Um, and uh, he was like, I want that one, that one, and that one. So, and obviously Stryker was from um, Days of Future Past. Uh, he was in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, and he was in uh, X-2. Uh, he was played by uh, Brian Cox uh, from X2. And Apocalypse. Apocalypse wants to take over Professor X's body, right? So, because long story short, the transfer didn't fully take place uh, when at the very beginning, right? It got interrupted a, a little bit from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, when, so he yeah, because Apocalypse and his crew take Professor X. Put him in a pyramid, and then Magneto surrounds him with a giant, like, magnetized earth metal ball force field him. <laughs> Apocalypse wants to transfer himself into Professor X's body because Professor X has all this power. That's how he loses his hair, apparently. Um, it, like, yeah. you know. So, all the X-Men show up. They fight the bad guys. Blah, 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 blah. Then the uh, the the mansion when when Apocalypse was inside uh, Xavier's head um, when it showed Apocalypse you know really big really tall uh, that's that's also um, you know part of his ability you know changing his changing his form changing his height and his 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 physical uh, body. Right, Magneto and Professor X reconcile. That's pretty much it. There's not much. I mean, literally. I mean, I could go. We could go into. Yeah, the because you get you get like a mental. You do get Jean Grey saving. It's, I, I don't. They go to like. I guess you. What would you call it? The mutant mental realm to have a fight. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I don't like know. it was not. It wasn't great. Yeah, and so you get. That's where you get Jean Grey really just fully unleashing her full power. Well, they, they kind of... They kind of... Yeah, she unleashes the Phoenix Force. But for some reason, the Phoenix Force doesn't go into her entirely until Dark Phoenix. She did, if she did not have the Phoenix Force, she would not be able to, to um, kill Apocalypse. Set it up for a sequel too, right? Because remember earlier in the film where she's sleeping and like there's fire and everything, and, and she says later in the movie, "I see the end of the world." I see the end of the world. Is what well, she says, and then she goes, "There's a dark presence inside of me that's you know burning that wants to get out." So that kind, of, they're setting the tracks for the Phoenix Force, right? And I'll save what about Dark Phoenix until next week when we review it, but they had so much potential after X3, they had so much potential to make a good Phoenix Force story, uh, but they don't, so. And the Phoenix Force, that storyline is like, it's a three-parter on the, it's the a three-parter on the animated series, I remember in, watching. In the comics, it is yeah, like, it's like, like a five-parter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, movie ends, right? They rebuilt the school. Professor X has his team of the mutants. Uh, Mystique is in her more typical comic outfit, right? She's blue, red hair with the white dress it is, on. Yeah. Um, it is frustrating to me that in these films, you never see full bad Magneto. You never see, like, evil Magneto. Right. Well, He's exactly always, like, the... on the cusp and then goes, aw, shucks. Yeah. Right. I think it's because they want him to have a sense of human, like humanizing portion to him. Like you want to relate to him with him a little bit. Um, so the movie ends, right? At this point, we don't know we're getting Dark Phoenix because uh, Dark Phoenix doesn't come out for a while. But the movie ends and we get a post credit scene. Yeah. We only get one. We only get two. Which is yeah. sinister. Essentially, a cleanup crew at Alkali Lake. 
one guy sucking up bullets where we have a shot of the bullets going through the, the hose, which we didn't need to see that. This, these suits come in and open up uh, uh, essentially a, a file and take all Wolverine's files, right, of his x-rays. Then they take a vial of his blood and put it into a briefcase with other vials of blood. When they shut the briefcase, it says exit Essex Corp on it. Yeah. Dennis. Sinister. What Marvel X-Men villain Mr. Sinister. runs Essex Corp? I have no idea. I was Mr. actually going to ask you about that. Mr. Sinister. You know the guy, uh, white face, has like the, the red diamond in the middle oh, of his head? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's Mr. Sinister. So, uh, his yeah. Nathaniel Essex, or something like that is his name. Um, and then a rumor at one point in time, they were going to make a fourth one that wasn't Dark Phoenix that would focus on the Essex, like Mr. Sinister is the big bad so guy. So do they try to make that... Is that supposed to be connective tissue? Or are they saying, like, trying to... And actually, um, Deadpool... Deadpool 2, uh, the, uh, the, the villain at the end of that was supposed to be a form of... Um, like a form of Mr. Sinister. So, yeah. Is connective tissue to Logan? No. Or they use his genes to make the other... No, I don't think... I don't think so. I think they were really trying to set up a fourth... Um, like a fourth movie in this saga, other than Dark Phoenix. Like, I don't think this one did too well at the box office, so they didn't want to green my... Uh, one where Mr. Sinister's the bad guy, um, but the rumor had like rumor had had it that John Hamm was going to play him. Um, it would have been. But, uh, I've always John thought Hamm that was, uh, Pierce Brosnan yeah, would play a great Sinister. So it's true. It's true. He was. He's a good actor. Though. He is a good actor. But yeah, that that is X Men Apocalypse. Like I said, fun. I really enjoyed it. I don't. There's not much. It's really just like a check your brain at the door kind of film. Right. It's interesting. I, I think I, what I really liked is it, it really kind of ties into the animated series, which is most people our age. That's how you were introduced to the X-Men. Was yeah, the 90s, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 90s cartoon. Um, so this, has very, this uh, out of all of them, feels the most like that. Right. Agreed. So, that was was good. I think next week we should watch Dark Phoenix. I think we should too. It is free on each. No, it's on Disney Plus now. Yep. Dennis, where can people find you on the socials? They can find me at TMP Dennis on Twitter. Dyer, where do they find you? At the Real Slim Jim. Also at Talk Marvel Plus. And I'm yes. now following and both like of you. Said earlier, go on over to patreoncom slash Talking Marvel Plus and join. Our Patreon and for a dollar you can join the Discord where you can chat it up with like minded individuals. I love might have to get on Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> and send you a few bucks. Until next week, folks. Please, 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 please do not forget that. All right, everybody, so there you go. There is uh, the episode for X-Men Apocalypse from uh, Talking Marvel, uh, plus uh, just just Dennis and, and um, Jot Dyer uh, this week. Um, so Daniel must have took the uh, week off, or he just hadn't seen X-Men Apocalypse yet. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, they, uh, I mean, they didn't really... They kind of skimmed over a lot of stuff, uh, but um, but yeah, it is what it is. I I fully understand it. Uh, this isn't the one. This isn't as big of a of a topic generator as like you know Days of Future Past would be, or you know X Two, or or Deadpool, or First Class. Uh, but uh, but generally, uh, I do. I do enjoy uh, X-Men Apocalypse for what it is. And like I said, I give it about a 4 out of 5. 8 out of 10 range. And it's it's pretty good. Um, so, and I generally like it. So, 
Yay! So until uh, my next um, reaction to talk talking Marvel Plus, uh, most likely it'll be keep on going backwards and uh, doing um, uh, you know Days of Future Past and and, and whatnot. So um, so yeah. So just just want to thank uh, Dennis and and Dyer and uh, and um, Daniel from uh, Talking Marvel Plus and just allowed me to do these reactions and uh, making me content while also uh, advertising uh, for your guys' uh, podcast and, and, and whatnot. So that's it for me. And until next time, take care, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video for the heck of it, dislike, you can comment your thoughts, your memories on X-Men Apocalypse from 2016. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Go watch a movie sometime. Later.